Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Uh, reinforcing or building upon our understanding of interrupts, I've got this circuit here uh, that has both a timer interrupt and the hardware interrupt. Uh, we've used this button before with the associated debouncing circuit uh, feeding into this Schmidt trigger. And we're looking at uh, interrupt, or we're using interrupt zero, which is pin two. And in addition, we have, uh, we're incorporating the timer one library, and we're using a timer interrupt also. And what we have is uh, seven notes, and we can step through each one of those notes, but if we stay on one note, uh, the timer will periodically change uh, the octave or the pitch of that note. And uh, there are five uh, octaves. Uh, I'm not a musical expert, but I th we have the bass frequency, and then we have four additional frequencies where the, the bass frequency is doubled, and then doubled again, and then doubled and doubled. So we have uh, five different uh, pitches of one single note and that repeats but every time you press this button here this uh, momentary switch we can change uh, the note and then it'll step through the octaves on that note and repeat until this button is pressed again so I just have the speaker here connected uh, to pin 12 and uh, I have the ground disconnected, so let me hook the ground back up and we can listen to this. And I'm also uh, using serial print so we can monitor uh, the frequencies. So that's one note, that's C. And then it doubles that, so uh, and then it doubles again, and so you, you get this uh, change in pitch, or an increase in octaves. And here we can change the bass note. That's E, F, and its octaves. G associated uh, with its octaves. A, B, and then it goes back down to C. In some ways, this is similar to the fading LED circuit and sketch. Uh, instead of the light fading, uh, increasing intensity and decreasing intensity, and then using this momentary switch to change the color, the um, timer is periodically changing the pitch or changing the octave of a, of a particular note and then when we press this switch we change the bass note. So let's take a look at this sketch. Um, let's go look at the monitor program first. So let's open up the monitor, serial monitor program, serial monitor And you can see there the frequencies. So you can see it starts at frequency 65, doubles to 130, 260, 520, and 1040, and then it goes back to 65. So we have the key, uh, the note is 65, and then you can see this is the multiplier that doubles the frequency to get the next octave. So you've got initial multiplier 1, then 2, 4, and then 8, and then 16. Okay, so let's take a look at the sketch. Uh, start, we have to include the timer1 library in the header file here. Include timer1.h. We don't have to include the hardware interrupt because that's built in to the Arduino IDE. Now we have to define our pin for the hardware interrupt, and we're calling it button underscore int 
and that's pin that's interrupt zero but it's pin two on the Arduino Uno uh, the speaker we're connecting to pin 12 and then we have to de define the frequencies that we're going to be using here uh, C is 65 Hertz D 73 E 82 F 87 G 98 A 110 and B 123 Hertz and if we look here um, two octaves below middle A and we have C here is 65.41 so that's how close we're getting there is 65 uh, D where's D 73.42 and we're using 73 so you can get this by just googling um, I googled uh, C scale frequencies um, so here are the frequencies here uh, for reference so we've defined them using uh, define and we have two other uh, variables here uh, if you have a variable that's changing within an interrupt it has to be defined as a volatile so here we have volatile of type integer key equal we're starting off with C and volatile int integer octave underscore multiplier and we're starting off with a multiplier of one so when we press that button we start off with each of these base frequencies I'm calling them uh, before it steps through each octave and then we have the serial port communications that we set up initialize serial dot begin 9600 baud uh, pin mode we're defining uh, we've already said speaker is uh, pin 12 and we're defining it as an output uh, the pin is inverted so we want to look at the rising edge it, remember it's going through the Schmidt trigger so here we're attaching the interrupt to uh, pin 2 and this is a button which we defined uh, button underscore int we've defined as interrupt zero this is the function that we're going to call when that a momentary button is pressed and we're going to be looking at the rising edge uh, just like uh, with the fading LED sketch and circuit and here we have the uh, timer interrupt so we have to uh, have uh, timer one dot initialize uh, the time we have is 0.5 seconds and this is in this is uh, 500,000 microseconds so one two three four five six which is 0.5 seconds here we have timer one dot attach interrupt and this is the function that gets called for the timer interrupt and runs change pitch on each timer interrupt so every 0.5 seconds it calls this function here change pitch and now uh, this is uh, like I said similar to the fading LED uh, where we had only three colors I think so uh, this is how we determine you know we'll we know what color we're on and when the interrupt occurs it says okay I know I'm on this color I know now to switch to the next color well in this case we're doing that with the note so the note and we, we have to specify that we're already uh, we're using an octave multiplier of one so we start off with the base with the base note so here we start off with C so if key note is C if we're, if we're already on C and the interrupt occurs remember this is the change key function that it will then go on to to D and then if we're already on D when the interrupt occurs when we press that button it will go to E and this is how we change from one note to the next note 
when the hardware interrupt, uh, when the change, uh, state change on interrupt zero is detected, which is pin two on the Arduino. And then next we have the timer interrupt. And uh, this is the function that gets called change pitch. So we have this octave multiplier, which we already initialized to one, and it'll equal octave multiplier times two. So if it's initially at one, it gets multiplied by two. And here we're checking, because we're only going to go up uh, to 16. So initial octave and then an additional, what is it, an additional four uh, pitches. So as long as we're still under 16, as long as the octave multiplier is still uh, below 16, uh, as soon as it's greater than 16, it goes back down to, to 1, so it equals 1. And here, this is where we set, this is where we set the tone for the speaker, and it's a speaker, and the key times the octave multiplier. And then we have the void loop for the serial print where we're going to print uh, the key, uh, the multiplier, the frequency, and then we have a delay. I found that this delay here of 100, uh, it's too slow. Um, well, it's, the, the delay isn't long enough. And what happens is you print out uh, three copies uh, before the, the pitch changes uh, of that note and that pitch. So you have to increase this to 500. And that's that. That's the sketch uh, for this particular circuit here where we have both a hardware for detecting this momentary switch being pressed and also the timer interrupt. Okay, so if we look at the monitor, serial monitor program again, you can see what's going on here with the serial print. Um, we have the base frequency now of 65 and then showing the multiplier 2, 4, 8, and 16 and then the associated frequency and that's cycling through at 0.5 seconds uh, for each interval and that's the um, that's the uh, timer interrupt and now the hardware interrupt will change this note the 65 to the next note which is D which is 73 you can hear the the change there and we're on auto scroll so that has to scroll up to the field of view here of the camera give it a second and there we are at 73 and then we double that and double it again and then when it reaches 16 it uh, multiply it gets reset to 1 and it repeats and each one of those is 0.5 second interval Again, the hardware, we can uh, step up to the next frequency, which is 82, which is uh, note E. Again, has to scroll up. I guess I, sh I should just put that at the bottom, focus on the bottom there. Okay, so that's better. We're at the bottom of the screen, so you can see it more uh, quickly. So we're at E, let's go to F, 87 hertz. G, 98 hertz, A, 110, and then B, 123. And then on the next uh, press of this momentary switch, the interrupt will uh, set this back to C. So we're back down to 65. 
So I hope this uh, reinforced your understanding of interrupts, both timer interrupts and hardware interrupts. If you found this video interesting or helpful, please subscribe, like, and or comment. And thanks for watching.